He's a music mogul, but also a businessman. Sean Diddy Combs has taken center stage over the last week or so, thanks to raids by federal authorities at two of Combs' homes. As we wait news of a possible arrest and indictment as part of a trafficking investigation, we're looking into some of Combs' other ventures and his powerful connections. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Most of us likely recognize Sean Combs as a successful rapper and producer who rose to fame in the 1990s. He's gone by names like Diddy, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Brother Love. But in the last few decades, he has made his mark in many other industries, and he has earned hundreds of millions of dollars and has won over some very high-powered friends in the process. But just last week... Investigators with Homeland Security raided two of Combs' homes, one in Miami, the other one in Los Angeles. They carried out bags and boxes full of items, likely things like electronics, but also possibly weapons like firearms. They said that this was in connection with an ongoing investigation, possibly into sex trafficking. Now, human trafficking, more generally, is when you exploit someone for labor or services or commercial sex. And that's what we mean when sex trafficking. It is the recruiting, transporting, soliciting somebody for the purposes of commercial sex. It's usually through the use of fraud or force or coercion, or if the person is a minor under 18 years of age. And now it is being reported that the feds are pushing ahead with the investigation, issuing subpoenas to companies that do business with Sean Combs. Some of the companies that were subpoenaed, this according to reporting from TMZ, include his private charter jet, phone providers, computer companies. It is also being reported that the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, the ones who are possibly heading up this operation, will also issue subpoenas to commercial airlines and the FAA to find out where Combs traveled, when he traveled, if he flew commercial. So it seems like investigators not only want to know what Combs' travel routes were, but they want to know who was flying with Combs, who flew with Combs at his expense, very similar to the way that investigators were looking into who flew on Jeffrey Epstein's private jet, the notorious sex offender, purported sex trafficker. And this will help them look for not only victims, but also witnesses who can confirm or deny some of these allegations. And that's really important because we talk so often about maybe we should not expect potential charges against Combs right now. This could be the start of an investigation. They need more evidence before they ultimately arrest and indict him. But we will see. Now, what Combs' exact connection is to this investigation, it is unknown right now. But the Southern District of New York, we know they do not do raids like this. And even though these raids were conducted by Homeland Security in conjunction, allegedly, with the Southern District of New York, They don't do this without having something. So there's a big deal here for this to happen. Now, we know that Combs' attorney, though, Aaron Dyer, released a statement saying in part, quote, that this was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. But to be clear, as of now, Combs has not been arrested nor criminally charged in connection with any sort of trafficking or sexual abuse. But the raids, they do come after these bombshell lawsuits were filed against Combs, accusing him of everything from sexual assault to physical abuse to drug use, having underage girls at his infamous parties. Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, filed her lawsuit back in November of 2023. It was explosive with pages and pages of graphic details. Combs settled the lawsuit with her the next day, but continues to deny the allegations that his ex-girlfriend made. The exact terms of the settlement are confidential. The other more recent lawsuit uh, that was filed in February by music producer Rodney Jones, known as Little Rod Jones, he made some more disturbing allegations against Combs, namely that he threatened, sexually assaulted, harassed him, even claimed the singer who had hired him to produce his latest album didn't really pay him for his work. Jones also says that in the year or so he was working with Combs, he saw drug use, the display of unregistered firearms, Combs spiking drinks for minors and sex workers, really horrific stuff. And he also claimed that Combs set it up so that actor Cuba Gooding Jr. could assault Jones on Combs' yacht, somewhere you can't really escape from. So as I keep saying, it is very possible 
that an arrest and indictment of Sean Combs could be coming shortly, especially if you think about what was collected at his properties, who was being interviewed, what evidence was used to support the search warrants that were ultimately signed off on to conduct these raids. There's a lot at stake. But the majority of our analysts believe that Combs will be arrested and indicted. Okay, putting that to the side, we want to do something different. We want to take a look back at some of the influence that Combs has had over the years because one of the reasons the raids came as such a shock and that they are so big and they'd be talked about so much is because think about the influence and impact Combs has had on the entertainment industry for the past, what, 20, 30 years? As we mentioned, Combs rose to fame in the early 1990s. He founded the record label Bad Boy Records in 1993, which later became Bad Boy Entertainment. He brought on Christopher Wallace, better known as the notorious B.I.G., with him to his new label. And by the way, at its height, the label was reportedly bringing in $130 million a year. Combs himself recorded his first vocal work as a rapper in 1997 under the name Puff Daddy called Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. His first album, No Way Out, went on to win the Grammy Award for Best Rap Album. Those early successes helped cement Combs as a star both inside and outside of the music industry. However, since Cassie's lawsuit was filed in November, Combs' radio airplay has dropped significantly. According to Billboard, Combs' big hits, which have been on rotation for years, have been played less and less, down a reported 88%. Now, as part of Bad Boy, Combs helped bring in some of the biggest names you could think of, the biggest artists, French Montana, Mace, Faith Evans, Janelle Monet, Machine Gun Kelly. In 2005, Combs and the artist Pitbull co-founded Bad Boy Latino with offices in New York and Miami. Combs is also credited on hundreds of songs for artists like Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey, LL Cool J, Jay-Z, Ice Cube, Britney Spears. But it is not just music, no. Combs has also had clear connections with the fashion industry as well. You might know that in 1998, Combs launched a clothing line called Sean John. California billionaire Ron Burkle invested $100 million into the company. Sean John became a very recognizable brand name, which pushed Combs further afield, designing Sean John inspired wheels for cars. Combs also launched multiple fragrance lines like Unforgivable and 3AM. And talking about his business ventures, in 2015, Combs once again teamed up with Ron Burkle, as well as actor Mark Wahlberg, to buy a majority stake in Aqua Hydrate, a drink geared to athletes. Now, Combs, he was born in Harlem, has always had a strong connection to New York, and he was even given the key to the city in September 2023, right before the bombshell lawsuits. But it is not just New York that he has big connections to. No, 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 no. He also has big connections out in Hollywood. He himself starred in an adaptation of Raisin in the Sun with John Stamos. He also acted and was featured in films like Get Him to the Greek, Monsters Ball, Draft Day. He was co-executive producer on films that appeared at Sundance. He's also listed as the writer and performer for a number of songs in numerous films and shows, including most recently Fast X, Transformers, and Euphoria. You may recall that he was the judge on Making the Band. This was an ABC and MTV reality show that focused on different musical acts, including the girl group Danity Kane. And talking about that for a second, one of its members, Aubrey O'Day, she has since spoken out about Combs. O'Day was dismissed from the group with Combs saying that she wasn't the same person he signed, that fame had changed her. But on a podcast in 2022, O'Day revealed that she was fired because she, quote, wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent-wise, but in other areas. She's since come out since the raids, posting on social media, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we have endured. And then, of course, is Combs' love life. Combs has purportedly dated several A-list celebrities, including Jennifer Lopez, Cameron Diaz, and the late Kim Porter, with whom he had shared three children. By the way, his connection to Jennifer Lopez has sparked renewed interest and in whether she could be issued a subpoena now. Why do I say that? Because she is mentioned in the Jones lawsuit. Jones claimed in the lawsuit that Combs showed off his guns, that he would brag about shooting people, 
and that he confessed he was responsible for that infamous 1999 shooting outside of a New York City nightclub. He claims that Combs admitted that Lopez, who Combs was dating at the time, had been the one that carried the gun into the club for Combs, then passed the gun to Combs, and when he got into an altercation with someone, there were shots that were fired, three people were injured. Jones claims that Combs forced his then-artist Shine to be the fall guy, taking the blame for the shooting of several people that night. He was sentenced for 10 years in prison, by the way. So not clear if she will be subpoenaed with respect to that lawsuit, or could she be subpoenaed with respect to this criminal investigation? I don't know. We'll see. I will tell you, not everything that Combs has touched or that he's been connected to has prospered. He at one point had a restaurant called Justin's, named after one of his sons. There were two locations, but both had been shut down. Combs has lent his name and image to marketing campaigns for Ciroc Vodka after he agreed to help develop their brand. He was paid for every case sold, which grew from 75,000 cases to 400,000 cases in just two years. But in June of 2023, new owners of Ciroc ended their partnership with Combs after he accused them of racism. Little side note about that. In their legal battle, which has settled, it was revealed that Combs purportedly made nearly a billion dollars from his participation in this liquor venture. The entertainment tycoon has also held a major equity stake in Revolt TV, a television network that also has a film branch. It was recently revealed that Combs had agreed to sell his stake in the network and step down as chairman in November. The move reportedly came after the horrifying allegations made against Combs in the lawsuit filed by his ex Cassie. So, of course, multiple successful businesses means lots of money, right? Combs is reportedly worth some $800 million. That's down slightly after the legal action with the new Ciroc owners. Combs was reportedly making $60 million a year just from Ciroc Vodka, which helped propel him to billionaire status in 2022. His Sean John clothing line was worth a reported $450 million when he sold it to Global Brands Group in 2016, and Combs pocketed $70 million of that. In the hip-hop world, only Jay-Z tops him on the list of richest artists. Combs' jet reportedly cost eight figures. He owns more than $1 million in jewelry and has a collection of art that includes pieces by Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. His home on Star Island in Miami is reportedly worth over $30 million, and his Los Angeles home in the wealthy Holmby Hills area is worth reportedly over $40 million. So with that kind of money and fame, sometimes things can go sideways quickly. And there is something to think about, too, when we talk about his businesses and his affiliated businesses. Because aside from these businesses potentially being issued subpoenas in this criminal investigation, when you look at the lawsuits, look at who else they're aimed at. For example, in the Jones lawsuit, he listed Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, all as defendants. The theory is that they are all part of a criminal racketeering enterprise, a violation of a federal RICO statute. The companies, Jones argues, are liable for the actions of Mr. Combs, his son Justin, another named defendant, and even Combs' chief of staff, Christina Quorum, as they were employees or agents of these entities acting on their behalf, that these entities should have been monitoring or warning or supervising what these people were allegedly doing. The big theme here is that they were part of a criminal enterprise, namely making money by forcing and threatening people like Jones to transport drugs and guns, solicit minors and sex workers, and make music without properly paying them. The common purpose of this enterprise was, quote, to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers and musicians like Jones. I say all of this to explain that it's not just Diddy who is in the crosshairs, but his companies, his associates, his affiliated companies. So in a massive lawsuit that could potentially result in damages, from a financial perspective, these legal actions could hurt Combs' wallet, his livelihood, and his reputation, to say the least. And also, that amount of fame and wealth and notoriety, that power, that has become a common theme in these lawsuits, that he had the wealth and the power to threaten the plaintiffs, to force them into certain situations, to do certain things. From the Jones lawsuit, Jones claimed that Combs would use his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Jones. Quote, Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. 
He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. In fact, here is a quote from the Cassie Ventura lawsuit. Quote, there was no one she could tell about what had happened at the hands of this incredibly powerful man. She recognized that she was powerless and that reporting Mr. Combs to the authorities would not alter Mr. Combs' status or influence, but would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. So there you have it. A little bit of a history lesson, a little bit of a recap about the power, the influence, the wealth of Diddy kind of puts everything else a little bit into perspective as he is constantly in the news. And we will continue to cover whatever updates happen in this case. We'll bring them to you here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.